to share this screen. All right. So, let's see. Just to give you an overview of who we are. So I'm Danielle. I'm, I work at Fairwinds um, and we put together a Kubernetes maturity model based on our experience helping manage Kubernetes for many companies. Um, and so I was invited into this group because we had something as a foundation that we could use um, to build upon as well as Simon had similar. So over to Simon for your intro. <laughs> Yeah. Um, hello, everybody. My name's Simon Forster. I'm the founder of a small uh, consultancy here, located here in London in the UK, uh, called Stackergy. And um, uh, I originally um, uh, engaged with with the CNCF uh, through through Cheryl Hung, as it happened, around some work that I'd been doing around maturity models previously uh, with with a number of, of organisations. And I. Uh, as with Danielle, I'm a co-chair of the Cartographers Working Group. So, John, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, you hear me okay? Yep. This is my messy office. Is everybody doing today? Um, I'm a director at Accenture. I'm, I'm, I'm also a master technology architect as well. Been at Accenture for going on eight years now. And over, the, over time, um, Robbie, Glenn, and I, who's on the call also, have built a maturity path model for our clients at Accenture, returning to the cloud, returning to Kubernetes. Um, and it was a pretty mature you know, model. And I thought, hey, this would be great to donate just to this, the, the CNCF. And then that kind of created the balls rolling and how we connected then with Danielle and Simon as well to make this reality. And then a QCon was the launch, and it was, it's, it's pretty exciting so far. So I'll pass the microphone over to Robbie. Hey, Robbie Glenn. I work with John. Um, on an, we we built uh, you know something of a maturity model for uh, some of our organizations, and uh, as you mentioned, that's kind of how uh, we got involved in, in this. And uh, instead of uh, uh, coming up with three you know distinct uh, um, uh, um, frameworks, we decided that we should combine them into one. So that's that's where some of this came from. Nice. So we have just a few slides to talk through. And then again, um, the kind of ask and discussion on what we want from all of you. So um, over to John, he's going to start us off. Sure. So everybody is familiar with the ISOR on the screen, right? When, when they go to CF's IO, you get this big, you know, screen of all these little icons and what do they mean? How do I use these? How do I adopt these? So a big part of our thinking over here when we went to kind of graphics and, and the maturity model was how do we take all this and shape this into a landscape that people actually can use and to embrace cloud native, to embrace CNCF, what does it really mean to be cloud native from a from model a one to five? How do we get one to five and within that that the roadmap as well? Obviously, you know, during you know the, the past you know, several years, a trial you know, map has also been defined as well. But how good is a trial map? Even though the trial map is very confusing and not really guiding you to where you need to be. So we thought as a team, collectively, how cool would it be to put together a true landscape, a true model, a true map, and how to get there. And thus, that, that's how, again, how Cartographers was, was created and developed. So over time, there's always been a journey, right? In the beginning, right, there was the journey to cloud. We all remember those days way back when, right? We used to be racking stack servers in a data centers that we ran every day. And then, then the cloud happened. And then everybody said, journey to the cloud, let's go to the cloud, yay. And that, that was going on for a very long time during the process. We went to VMs, the VMs went to the cloud. That, that was that initial journey. And then, you know, this whole thing about DevOps be began to come up. How do we do DevSecOps in this new landscape? I'm used to doing DevOps in my old world, rack and stack servers on premise, but what, how do I relate that to the cloud? How does that journey happen? Right? And then over time, Kubernetes became more of a thing from Swarm to Kubernetes, right? Through the, the last several years. And then you know, Kubernetes has become the operating system of the cloud. Now that we have the operating system in the cloud, there's a new journey. And we believe that journey is not cloud native. And cloud native is born 
from at least three roads on, on the left-hand side where, you know, from between cloud, DevOps, and the Kubernetes container journey, you know, we've evolved today now to where we are. And this is the cloud native journey. And, and in my opinion, in all, all opinion, the road always leads to cloud journey, to, to cloud native. So that's where we are. Next slide. You're up on some of these slides. Yeah. So um, we kind of touched on this before, but the idea is that, you know, uh, we were individually kind of uh, seeing in the in the industry when we work with clients that we were building roadmaps over and over for for them. And uh, and basically, you know, what we wanted to uh, provide was not just not necessarily a, a single roadmap that's going to try and fit every, um, you know, a one size fits all, but really a framework for um, to, you know, provide some really good um, uh, insight into how uh, how you might uh, um, go from from one maturity level to another, but also um, across the the board, we wanted to uh, instead of just focusing on technology, which is oftentimes uh, what we're focusing on when we when we talk about uh, in introducing you know a new a new uh, technology into your organization, we wanted to actually look at uh, other. Um, um, other dimensions, including, you know, the, the people aspect of it, how the, your organization needs to change along the journey, um, the different types of, of policies you might need to implement along the way. There's a huge emphasis these days on policy and there's a, a, a migration toward, um, you know, to, toward um, policy as, uh, or I mean, uh, um, infrastructure as policy almost. Um, and then uh, we wanted to make sure that we provided that, that kind of, uh, that kind of, overall um, you know journey across multiple maturity levels that I uh, sort of uh, goes across those those four dimensions so this is just a, a much uh, you know kind of a condensed um, uh, version of the last slide it's it's really around the tactical versus the aspirational uh, uh, components of this so very tactically we're trying to pro provide this framework uh, we have uh, some documents in um, that we have pushed to GitHub uh, that kind of give some overviews. We have some. Um, we actually have a uh, spreadsheet that we're that we've worked in to really provide that kind of uh, level of of um, detail in terms of like where you know um, either activities or events happen within the particular framework. But aspirationally, we're really trying to you know help users adopt. These, uh, this cloud native uh, journey and build their own journey for themselves. Go through kind of what, excuse me, the um, maturity model looks like. So there's five main phases of the maturity model. And what we did is we built them up as to like, okay, where are you at? So in the first stage in the build, these are people who are in pre-production. They are trialing stuff but they're in, but they're not really, nothing's in production yet. They're experimenting. Then you move on to operating where you do have a foundation established and you're looking to deploy probably one app, an easy app um, into production. Stage three is about scaling. So the steps you need to make sure Kubernetes can work across your organization, across multiple apps. Um, in the fourth stage, you're looking at improving everything. So that's where we have said, okay, you're going to be looking to improve your security, your policy, your governance. Um, and then in stage five is where you can look back at everything you've built and done and how can you optimize it? What metrics do you need to be monitoring? And what do you need to do to make sure the infrastructure is optimized? So there are detailed descriptions of the five stages all on GitHub. Um, that you can you can look at and then the kind of how the model is divided which robbie alluded to a little bit and i'm sorry about the background noise my dogs have decided to fight right now so good you know it's always when you're on a call um so we broke it into four main divisions so we looked at the people because when you move to cloud native and you're adopting um, the technology, it's also about how the people are going to interact with the technology, how it's going to work across your organization, how are you going to build teams. We then looked at like, well, what are the processes you're going to need to put in place to make sure cloud native is successful? What are the policies you need to translate from your existing 
infrastructure technology to the cloud native world? And then what is the technology that you're going to use? And I think for all of you on this call, we're really interested in the technology part um, because with the technology, with the people, the process, the policy, we spent a lot of time looking at those aspects and doing a high level, like this is what you need to be thinking about. But in the technology, it's all of the expertise that you know you might be able to elaborate on for us. Um, so Simon, you're going to talk about how everybody can get involved and help us make this maturity model so much better than it is. Yeah, thank you. So first off, and, and importantly, uh, being a CNCF project, we do have a repository under the CNCF organization called Cartographos. Uh, it contains within there a, um, the um, main charter, of course, and how the group is put together and how to contribute. It also contains within there uh, a series of documents as a, a prologue and also um, a document for the respective areas of people, process, policy, and technology, and the five levels and how they relate to all of those. Uh, we, uh, uh, we also um, have at FIPI.io the book, Admiral Bash's Island Adventure as well, uh, which uh, came out. Uh, that uh, book, um, the reason that I bring that up is that was based on much of the work that we, we did within the maturity model. Um, it would be helpful um, if you wish to, to just have a, a brief review, uh, if only if the prologue, this will help you to, to gain a little more understanding of exactly what we're doing. At this point in time, what we haven't, we have not put together a graphical artifact such as the, like the trail map, nor the landscape. Uh, we do see that something like that will be on the roadmap for us also. But, to the, but uh, we'd really appreciate your contribu contribution. In terms of getting involved, um, we already have uh, this meeting. We hold this actually every two weeks. And likewise, the, uh, the, um, uh, the details are available in the, in the GitHub repo. What we'd really like now, because we're at the stage where we're trying to mature the maturity model, is we'd like to have involvement from, from your respective tags. And if possible, we'd really appreciate having somebody who might be able to come along and help us liaise, a, a contact person, if, if nothing else. And uh, what we've, put, we've started is um, we've put together a spreadsheet um, that contains just uh, each of the levels and uh, the um, uh, levels one through five, and what the where the uh, and uh, where we hope each of the tags will be able to, to contribute. But I think the important thing for us is starting that conversation, and we also do have a channel on on Slack. Uh, also, uh, yeah, thank you, Danielle. Thanks for bringing that up. So you, what you can see there is we've got the, the, um, uh, each of the five levels with their descriptions, okay? Uh, we've got um, some areas. So we've got, you'll see on the left-hand side, you can see the blue line, we've got people. And then under that, we've got a few various stakeholders. Then we come to process as well. Okay, and you can see under process, we've got some other, we've got CI, CD, change control, some security and software supply chain. And then we have policy further down. And of course, technology. We've produced this in order to give you an idea of some of the rigor that we went through. We did go spend a, a significant chunk of, of this year working through each of the, the areas. Um, Danielle, if you could just switch to the second tab, template for, for tag, just as a, as a helpful reference as well. Uh, what we've identified is just the tags and just some thoughts. We're really after any guidance under the respective areas that you may be able to, to, to provide us with. Um, so if you're able to perhaps populate that, we can ensure you receive all of the details of, of this. Um, in plenty of time. 
And please feel free to ignore suggestions that you may see in there. For example, I can see some of the projects such as um, Caverno or OPA mentioned. We'd like to defer to you as to, to where you think some of these uh, projects may come in. One of the really important, um, uh, a really important um, task for the maturity model is to um, perhaps assist in setting a common baseline. Different people have ideas of the level of maturity around where you would bring in um, a, a project perhaps into an organization. Uh, so, so we're really interested to get your thoughts on what are the prerequisites? Clearly, Kubernetes is a very early one for everybody, but with the projects in your respective area, where do you feel as an organization or institution embarks on its cloud native maturity journey, where, where would it be worth bringing that in? And what, what would you like to see as a prerequisite as well? So we'd really value your feedback there. Okay. Um, we'll distribute this um, spreadsheet to all of you um, after this. Um, and we do appreciate, of course, your, your effort to come along today. Uh, Danielle, and I think one of yeah. the, the things is that we're also able to meet with you separately. Like if this meeting time doesn't work or you want to just pick our brains as to how we built the original spreadsheet or what we did, like we're happy to get involved on your side um, when it's convenient. Um, and just in terms of like where this is with the CNCF, so we did have a book published based on this um, and it was mentioned at KubeCon in North America during the keynotes. So as we move into kind of 2022, the CNCF wants this more matured so that they continue to promote it so that when people are coming to them or you know end users are coming going what do we need to do this is going to be the resource that the CNCF points them to and the end users um, group is going to get visibility into this in detail in January so that's kind of the what's in it for you you can get in, end users to be thinking about your special areas early and uh, just to finish off perhaps we've got the, the bring up the last slides there danielle thank you Great. yep so so um as you know we've started the process of socializing this amongst the tags and also uh, we've been getting in touch with the end user groups as well um, but the charter of the working group means that uh, we can work on more than just the, the cloud native maturity model. Um, uh, we're really around also working to, to develop tools to help um, the community navigate the cloud native landscape. So we are also interested in new ideas for, for artifacts. We have worked in uh, coordination with the CNCF Business Value Committee and the um, CNCF Landscape Guide has been published. Some of you may be aware of that now at uh, landscape.cncf.io. So of course, we, we always appreciate contributors coming along. So um, just on the last slide as well, just to, to finish up, um, we will distribute it again, but um, we do have the model. We've got the four um, key areas of people, process, policy, and technology and we will distribute to you the spreadsheet. The core reason, of course, that we, we're here today and why we've invited you all is to um, start the conversation. We're really keen to make sure that we get as, as, um, as much input as we possibly can from the CNCF and, and its projects. And, uh, and we, we believe that uh, you're all absolutely critical to, to that mission and we, we would love to help you. Thank you. So I think with that, you know, if you have questions, want to ask about this, we're happy to discuss. Yes, yeah, so I have a question. So as, um, as far as uh, 
questions in help uh, the spreadsheet is the main part or I mean you talked about setting up meetings afterwards and also that yeah. becomes part of the contributions or, or how, how to so help out basically yeah the spreadsheet is the main thing so using that to kind of think through okay the five stages what is important to the tag um, and we put it in the spreadsheet because we thought that that was the easiest way for all of you to contribute, but we do have this all on GitHub. So if it's easier for you to do pull requests in the main documentation written up, then that works too. Um, and again, if you're kind of going, okay, we're working on the spreadsheet, we'd love to have one of you attend a call just to make sure we're aligned with what needs to get done. We're happy to do that. Perfect. Thanks. Josh, you had a question? Yeah. Uh, my first question is, who exactly is going to be doing all of this analysis work? So that has been, <clears throat> been Robbie, John, Simon, and myself looking at it and doing it. Um, so the maturity model that's published and the one that the CNCF is promoting we put together and then we shared with um simon correct me of the name the main people good chris so it was cheryl hung chris anaset and yeah. uh, also katie gamanji on the end user community side so we socialized it throughout the the um yeah. the cnc no i'm yeah I, i'm more concerned the the actual like collecting of information for each project because right. I'll tell you being part of the CNCF already involves a ginormous amount of people paperwork time mm -hmm. and adding one more ongoing set of information that has to be tracked is going to be a serious problem in the current environment. Yeah. So, so um, what we'll continue to work to, to collate and, and evolve the model. That's a core responsibility of this working group. Um, we don't want to burden anybody with additional overhead. So the key thing is we're really interested in observations uh, if, um, in starting the conversation. And um, uh, if there are sources of information that you think, oh, this is really relevant to what the working group is doing and to the maturity model, we're very happy to be pointed in the right direction. If all it is is popping a URL in Slack and saying there's some great stuff here and we think you should know about it, that would be great. We want to foremost avoid any inaccuracy in what we're doing. So we just want to make sure that we don't put out incorrect information that you're, you're all not happy with. So you don't have to worry about rewording or submitting PRs. You have, of course you can, but we realize that there's a real overhead in that and we're happy to maintain that ownership of carrying carrying out the updates to that. Now, yeah. you, you, you do understand that this information you're assembling is going to be highly political, yes? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, we, 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 yeah, we, we, we do. And I, I want to just jump in for a second and just say a few things. And if you look at overall, you know, Sandbox and CNCF and, and Linux Foundation projects, it's a lot about coding. You know, I think it is, it is, it is programs and development cycles and, and cool things that's, that's been developed. When I first approached Cheryl Hunt about this approach for the uh, maturing model, she said, well, John, there's no code in that. That's just documentation. I don't know if we could do this or not. This is, we got to say that it's a workout, and but through you know weeks of discussions, we we're able to, to make sense out of this, right? After I brought in you know Danielle and Simon to the party as well, and so that we we get traction on this thing. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I don't I, I truly don't think cloud native can fully mature and get out there without some kind of model behind it to do this. So I, I'm very passionate about this as well as you know we are on, on this team. To do this, and, and yes, there, there's a lot of overhead here, and it may be a p very opinionated. A lot of things that I, I, I personally wrote in this thing is very opinionated, and I, I expect that there may be some religious roadblocks on, on, on things. But at the same time, we could further mature it to be, you know, more than one, you know, thought. You know, by bringing other people in, we can make it more, more maybe balanced as well. 
right? If that makes sense. And so, Alex, well, give you one second. I think the big thing, Josh, is that in terms of political, I think people don't disagree that you're doing a migration with technology, that you need some process in place, you need people to adapt, you need, you know, the core foundation of it. It's like, yeah, those things are going to need to happen. Now, whether something is in phase one or phase three, that's debatable. That can be discussed. Things can be moved around. And that is why, you know, we know that the four of us brought opinions to this, put it in there. But now we need to make it more encompassing of the entire community. Mm. Alex, you had something? Um, so two points. I was I was just thinking and, and just maybe thinking aloud here, but I kind of think it's gonna be there there is gonna be a bit of a king making thing if we're putting projects in specific buckets. But if we but I also kind of agree with John that some sort of roadmap and some sort of, you know, path to follow is 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 kind of obvious. And and, and maybe there are a bunch of unspoken you know things there anyway even even if it's not official um but I'm, I'm kind of wondering if we can also just have some general guidelines around that around you know saying you know graduated projects are 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 better for level one and incubated projects are you know better for level two or or, or something like that but but um but i think we're going to have a bit of a challenge if we just think about it from a project point of view. And, and honestly, I think we should be looking at this in a, in a broader sense. So, so I'm co-chair of the storage tag. And, and, and as you were talking, I was kind of thinking, well, what aspects of the technology would we also like to see there? So, so for example, we, we could say, um, at a certain level, you may want to consider using operators, or you may want to consider using a particular security policy for storage. And it's not just, you know, the technology side for a specific project, but it's 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 actually how you would do day two operations and storage, you know, um, uh, as well. And and I and I can imagine the same is going to apply for say networking or, or security or, or or anything else like you know the, the concept of GitOps isn't just a you know a runtime thing it could also be a storage thing it could also be a networking thing etc mm -hmm. so and i i think we all agree with you we put and it's in github that we would only include reference to graduated projects because we didn't want to get involved with, well, this is incubating, well, this is sandbox, and this is in here now and not in here. So we were like, we're just doing that, and we're not including any commercial project uh, products in here. Um, and I think, Alex, your point is very much how this is talking about. It's saying at this stage, you should be thinking about how you're integrating security. And you're probably going to be thinking about this, this, and this. So likewise with storage, you know, in phase one, you're probably going to be, and I'm making this up, like the default storage settings that you can get in the cloud. But as you mature, you're going to want to think further down that. Um, and I think the way we've worded it to date and the way we'd like to have all of you contribute is at that higher level of like, you should be thinking about these things now in this stage but not giving necessarily going. And the answer is X, because we all know that everybody is deploying their cloud native technologies differently. Like it is not uniform anywhere. No, right, exactly. And, and, and honestly, I'd love to tie this back to, um, to some of the work that we're also doing in the tag around, for example, you know, if, if you're, like for example, we have our white paper and we can certainly plug a, a chunk of, of our landscape white paper um, into, into some of those different sections. But then, you know, we could also have at level three, you may want to consider, you know, 
um, benchmarking and performance analysis, and, and, and here's a link to the storage performance mm -hmm. analysis document that we provided. And that's level four, you might want to consider disaster recovery. And here's a link to the cloud native disaster recovery document that we provided, you know, and, and those, those, those kind of things. I sure hope people are considering disaster recovery before level four. Well, it's just an example. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. But I think that's exactly right. This could be, I mean, it's hard to find resources that everyone is creating, right? We're all out there creating different resources and we want people to read them and digest them. Otherwise, we wouldn't spend all this energy creating them. So having the maturity model where we're linking to the different resources that has already been produced, I think is of extreme value. And then again, the CNCF can say, this is your your handbook that you can consider with all of the resources interlinked. Um, mm -hmm. And it, yeah. And I think um, Alex, some of the subtlety that you brought to that conversation just then is exactly what we would like to bring as well. And uh, if we look at the trail map, for example, that mentions specific projects and, and is attempting in some respects to and undertake that king making role that we've spoken about and how troublesome that is. It's so it's precisely because of that challenge that we we made sure we incorporated the other dimensions of people, process and technology. Of people, process and policy, I'm sorry, as well as technology. Mm -hmm. It's precisely for that point. So you're absolutely right. You fit the nail on the head and, and actually described a key motivation for us all with this. Yeah, I, I I think that's going to be significantly more important. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it kind of applies differently to each of the different um, categories. But in, in, in storage, we've always had a little bit of a dilemma because um, there are, you know, storage covers a wide variety of things, everything from, you know, volumes to databases to object stores to key value stores and, and everything in between, right? And and so we we don't necessarily automatically have CNCF projects which are graduated in all of those different fields, but the reality is most people do cloud native with a variety of cloud services and commercial projects and some projects which might be under different foundations as well. And so it's more important to kind of capture some of the attributes and some of the methodologies and the policies and the how-tos rather than the than just you know, say, use this project, because that's not necessarily going to, like, tick all the boxes for most people. Yeah, agreed on all of that. Cool. Um, a couple of things to, to point out. First of all, I really liked, uh, Josh, when you when you chimed in there and said that we, we want to, you know, we should be seeing DR earlier. That's the exact kind of, you know, uh, guidance we're, we're looking for. And I think that we probably did, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe we, maybe we didn't touch on DR. It's been a while, um, since we, since I looked, but, but that's the, that's the kind of interaction we're looking for. Um, it, it helps us, uh, make sure that we're kind of, you know, honing in on the right, um, the right, uh, maturity. These, I, I do want to point out, I guess that, you know, there's a tendency, especially at organizations when, uh, you know, when, when we've brought these kind of things in the past that they want to look at these in terms of their, uh, capabilities. So the maturity of their capabilities, that they can do this, that they can, you know, uh, um, implement DevSecOps, but do they, do they, have they hit that, um, that kind of saturation where every project that's running Kubernetes is doing all of these great things. Um, so I think that's another like aspect of the maturity models that we're trying to, to promote is that it's not, it's, this is not about, you know, oh, we could do this. It's that we and we're doing it across the board as a baseline. So uh, yeah, one thing to point out there, it, just to, I guess, finish that out, is that um, many of the maturity levels, you can actually achieve a, a high degree of, um, you know, uh, maturity within that level, right? So like, let's say you're level three, you're, you're scaled out, but maybe you don't ever need to get to that optimized point. You, there's totally uh, valid... Um, um, reasons to to really uh to to make the goal uh you know not necessarily level five sorry john 
And one thing I just want to point out is one of the things that when I talk to, you know, companies that are going cloud native and Kubernetes and all those great things around that, is that a lot of times they want a prescribed method. They want to know how to do it. You know, uh, they're, they don't have the resources to do it themselves, right? And so they're really looking for a prescribed way of doing things. So the whole idea of the initial, one of my initial ideas of, of this cloud native maturity model was to give you know, clients, uh, uh, companies, a, um, a roadmap, you know, a prescribed way of doing it because they're, they're looking for that leadership. They're looking for the, that thought leadership. And if we could take the, the best people in the community, help us build this out to have more you know, perspectives, more opinions, more viewpoints on a prescribed method, the, the more mature it'll be. And, you know, yes, it may be political. That, that's fine. I mean, I, you know, that's, that's not a concern of mine, but there may be political at some point, but at the same, at the same point though, you know, in order for this to evolve, this is needed. And like I said before, and so these viewpoints, I think will help balance it out as well. If it is swung one way too far, you know, we could definitely maybe help swing more to, towards the middle with, with more opinions, you know, but I, to, I, again, driving a prescribed method approach is, is really what I'm, you know, want to make sure that, that we're on the path to. Can, can I just clarify one thing? So um, I like the concept of having this matrix where, you know, there's people policy, et cetera, and then the different technologies. And um, in some ways, and I'm probably showing my age here, but it kind of does remind me a little bit of like the Gartner infrastructure maturity models from the early 2000s, where where you kind of had this this grid, and you can kind of rake yourself across different lines. But but the, ultimately, um, we want it we want it to be guidance. But it, you know, you mentioned a prescribed model, but I think in reality, organizations will probably travel down the different levels and the different categories at different paces. So so they might be. Uh, you know, like a level five on people and uh, level two on scaling, for example, right, or whatever. Well, and they might also be at, say, level five across the board for one application, but be just starting a new application migration where they're like, Ooh, okay, we're starting again. So yeah, it is, you know, it is going to differ which is why we're like, we're just trying to put the guidance there and the resources there. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, the, 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 the one point that I think is really super powerful for organizations in terms of which part to go down is to look at the ratings, look at the sort of the assessments across the different categories and see where you've got big gaps because in, in, you know, it's kind of okay that almost every org is not going to, be a straight line down the middle, right? You're 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 not going to be like a level two everywhere or a level three everywhere. But I think if you have a big gap where maybe you're level four in scaling, but you're only level one in security, you're going to have a, a big issue, um, and and that's going to hit you in terms of you know either people problems or team problems or other sorts of reliability issues or whatever else. And 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 I think that's that's the more important thing to kind of try and keep a certain amount of evenness so that you're not more than two levels out on any particular category or whatever. Yep. So I think, um, I, you know, I think that's all valid points, Alex. Um, in terms of next steps, what we all like you to do is look over the content. We'll send, um, we can email you all the resources if you don't have them. Um, or share them in the CNCF Slack channel for your tag. But we'd like to understand like, if you are going to go away and work on the spreadsheet as a tag group, or if you would like to show up to our bi-weekly calls and we all work and collaborate together, we're open to either. We just want to make sure that all of you who showed up today stay involved now. We got you. You're here. You're part of the group. Welcome to the Cartographos group. I, I'd actually like to talk about involving some other people mm -hmm. um, because within uh, tag app delivery, we've been kicking around the idea of spinning off in app modernization working group, basically modern migrations. Mm -hmm. And it feels like the people who are involved with that should also be very involved with this because they've already been kind of writing out the here are the stages of migrating. 
Um, that would be great. And, you know, that's, again, like we kind of reached out to all of the tags to say, hey, please get involved. One of you, four of you, <clears> five of you. Um, so, and, and happy, we'll have the recording of this so that if you do want to share this with anybody on the on your tag, um, you can do that. Yeah, we really welcome contributions from anybody. Feel free to spread the word. Absolutely. Yep. And if you'd like us to come along to one of your meetings as well, one of, we're all in different time zones, so I'm sure we can work something out there also if that's of, of some use. That sounds good. I think just speaking for the storage tag, we'd probably um, like to work on this from a tag point of view, I think. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we might break up the work um, between a couple of different tech leads to try and make work happen in a realistic time frame. Otherwise, if it's too big a task, it, it might be overwhelming. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I, I would, would, would love to work on this together. Is there is there some sort of timeline for this? So we don't have a specific set date, but what we really want to do is be in a position where we're going to KubeCon EU and we are going, this is the latest maturity model, the tags have been involved. Um, so it's likely that we're going to have a maintainer track session. Um, and so we would look to kind of present this there. Um, and again, like in North America, the end user, Katie made a big splash around this group and the maturity model. So we're assuming similar is gonna happen in at the EU event. So I imagine that means realistically, we're talking about content that's ready for review around March time. Yeah, yep. Plenty of time. So Alex, having worked with you, you'll be getting it like what, March 31st or April 1st? <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> there'll be, there'll be a good amount of team effort here. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, any other questions? Any other comments? Well, thank you. Yeah. How how do how do I email you as a group when I want to connect somebody? So we don't have a group email at the moment, um, but we do have a Slack channel, which is the Cartograph okay. Working Group. So you can or Cartographos dash WG. So you can get us there. Um, otherwise, mm -hmm. it's yeah individual email addresses. Yeah. Our, so uh, so uh, my email address, Danielle and, and John, we're all listed on the on the repo. So feel free to email any or all of us and we'll certainly circulate it as appropriate. Yeah, no trouble there. All right, anything else? All right, thank you all for showing up. Thank you for joining our group now that you're official members, everyone. Appreciate it. <laughs> Have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.